the Tribal Health and Human Services Department of the Confederated Salish and Kootenai Tribes is proud to present Good Medicine, a program dedicated to the wellness of the Flathead Nation. The mission is summarized quite simply, a healthier people, a stronger nation. We will strive to make Good Medicine a reliable source of ideas and information about health issues so that everyone can make informed decisions about their own lifestyle and health care. You will meet health professionals, tribal government and spiritual leaders, and interesting people from the tribal community discussing important health issues that profoundly affect us all. Good evening from Good Medicine. The emphasis this month is going on Good Medicine will be on weight management, how it fits into achieving wellness within our population. I would like to introduce this um, evening, uh, Paul Coates. He is our nurse practitioner. Paul has been with us at Tribal Health for the last three years and um, has been a tremendous asset for us. Um, this week we're going to be, Paul, just asking you a few things about yourself and about a program that we're doing with, with weight management. So Paul, tell us something about yourself. Great. Well, I'm honored and happy to be here and um, want to say hello to everybody out there and wish everybody a good new year. And uh, I don't know what exactly to say about myself. I, um, I'm just glad to be here and try and do my best job for folks. All right. Thanks, Paul. Obesity, Paul. I read about it, I see about it on TV, I, I hear this all the time about how it's affecting our life and what is obesity? Obesity or a bee sting? No. <laughs> <laughs> obesity, Larry, that's a, that's a, a hard thing to define. Um, each person kind of has their own idea about what obesity is. Some mornings I get up and look in the mirror and I go, ugh, I'm obese. Uh, other times I get in front of that mirror and say, oh, I look pretty good. I step on the scale, I'm the same weight both times. There's been a lot of controversy amongst experts about how you define obesity exactly. Um, when researchers go to define this, they go to very precisely measure the percentage of body fat that's on a person. Um, because obviously you can have somebody who weighs a lot but has very little body fat. Let's say uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger is an example. The guy weighs a ton but he's got very little body fat on him. You can't say that he is exactly obese. Somebody that is carrying around a high percentage of body fat, then that's considered obesity. The most precise way to measure that is actually kind of interesting to do. They um, put people in swimming pools and they weigh them inside of a swimming pool. And as most people know, uh, fat tends to float a little bit more. And using those kinds of measures, they can determine very precisely how much of a person is fat and how much is muscle, et cetera. That's a little bit hard to do in a doctor's office. Swimming pools are hard to find. And uh, so what's being used most often now is something that's called a body mass index. And that's where they take somebody's height and their weight, and then there's a special formula that's used to come up with a single number that determines whether somebody is obese or not. And uh, I think in some of the future programs coming up, uh, we're going to make it possible for our viewers to uh, be able to calculate your own body mass index right there on the TV. You'll have to get a piece of paper and uh, stick it on to the television screen to do that, but, but you should be able to do that. Obesity is having too much body fat, and in general, if you're between 20 and 30 percent more heavy than what your ideal is, then that's considered obesity. Um, the farther over that 20 percent that you get, the more dangerous it becomes to carry around that extra fat. Um, so we're not looking at somebody that's, we don't call somebody that's packing around maybe five or 10 or even 20 extra pounds obese. Um, usually we're looking at 
between 30 and 40 pounds heavier than what you ought to be. Okay. So what is your body fat? My body fat, <laughs> last time I had it checked, my body fat was uh, 27%. So you're okay then? I'm, I, could high. I could stand to lose some weight. Cool, all right. Um, you know, as, as I go around the reservation and, and off the reservation, I see many different body shapes. Mm. Uh, is there a health risk in the way our body looks? Yeah, there is, Larry, and um, I, I've noticed that same thing, and some, so have the researchers also. And they, as, as the researchers have been studying obesity, what they're finding is that some of those different shapes have different risks that go along with it. Um, I think there's a, a slide that's going to be flashed here. There's two basic body types. Uh, the one that is shown on the screen on the left is called a gynecoid body type, and the kind that's on the right there is called the android body type. Um, and the, the way that the researchers have come to look at this is they measure the person's waist, you know, right underneath the ribs, and then they measure the hips. And they call that the hip to waist ratio. And for those people that are smaller in the waist than they are at the hip, those people tend to have less obesity-related health problems than the folks that are bigger at the waist than they are at the hip. And uh, since gynecoid and android are kind of uh, space alien sounding words, uh, what we in the business have come to refer to people as is either apples or oranges. And uh, an apple is, is somebody um, who has the, who's bigger around the waist than they are at the hips, and a pear is somebody that's smaller at the waist than they are at the hips. Yeah. Okay, you said apple and oranges, you meant apple and pears. Oh, did I say oranges? Oh, yeah, I meant well, pears, okay. Right. Yeah, apples and pears. Okay. okay, so what about people who look like zippers? <laughs> Those are people like you, and, and right. you're in serious trouble, and we've all known that for a long time. That's right. Well, I mean, I have a problem, so what, is obesity a problem in this world today? Oh, obesity is a huge problem in this world, and obesity in particular has been uh, a big problem within Indian country. Uh, nationwide, obesity is something that has been on the increase over the last 70 years and probably since, uh, probably over the last 200 years as our lifestyles have uh, undergone more progress as we've been able to uh, decrease the amount of manual labor that we've been able to do as we've been able to increase the amounts of foods that that we have available to us what's happened not surprisingly is that we've been getting heavier and our bodies have been getting fatter because we just as a nation aren't doing as much exercise and the types of foods that we're eating are uh, are more fatty and more sugary and more high calorie and so we're in general spending less energy and consuming more calories and so over the years we've been getting heavier and heavier. In fact obesity now affects about 20 percent of the United States, or I'm sorry 30 percent so almost a third of, of the people in the United States are technically obese and even amongst teenagers, over 20% of our teenagers are now um, obese in there. Um, obesity is a serious, uh, a serious risk factor for many kinds of illnesses. Um, I think one of the ones that I worry about the most is diabetes. Um, people who are obese, and especially if there is a family history of diabetes, their chances of developing diabetes just go higher and higher and higher. In fact, it's uh, almost uh, it, it's almost a sure bet that somebody who is obese and who has a strong family history of diabetes will eventually develop diabetes sometime in their life. So obesity plays into diabetes. Obesity plays into heart disease because the more body fat you have, the more fat there is circulating in your blood. The more fat you've got in your blood, the easier it is for your arteries to get clogged up with that fat. 
the more your arteries get clogged up, the easier it is to have a heart attack or a stroke or some of these kinds of cardiovascular problems. High blood pressure tends to be very strongly connected with obesity. Um, it's, there's in the medical business, there's kind of this joke, this running joke in, in emergency rooms that when you get uh, somebody who is uh, fat, female, and 40 coming in with abdominal pain, chances are very strong that they're having a gallbladder attack. And people that are heavy tend to make more gallstones and have, uh, have their gallbladders operated on much more frequently. Um, in addition, if you're packing around, um, even in my case where, say, I'm packing around 25, 30 extra pounds, um, over a long period of time, that really puts a strain on my back, on my knees, on my ankles, and there is a lot of bone problems, knee problems, back problems that are directly connected to obesity. Um, in addition, there are some cancers, some types of cancer that you're much more likely to get if you're packing around extra weight. Um, and I guess one of the things that, that doesn't get figured into a lot when you're talking about obesity is that, you know, it's not, it's, it's become politically incorrect to make a lot of jokes about uh, race or about uh, sex or uh, sexual orientation or uh, there's been a lot of jokes that we can't tell anymore. Well, one joke, one type of joke that is still very acceptable are the fat jokes. And um, when somebody is heavy, when somebody is obese, um, there is a tendency, I think, in our society to really look down and shame and have a negative outlook to somebody that is obese. And the effects that that has on a person's self-esteem is huge. Mm -hmm. um, there's a really high incidence of depression uh, with people that are obese. And when you start combining all of these factors, feeling low self-esteem, feeling depressed, feeling heavy, being heavy, not being able to participate um, to the same extent in some social activities, dances, uh, playing different sports, things like that, it really all adds up to being a very serious problem, not only on a physical level, but on a psychological level, and also on a social level. If you don't feel good about yourself, if you're ashamed of the way that you look, that means you're gonna be more likely to stay away from friends and loved ones and social events. And so it's really hard for us to precisely measure just how much of a problem obesity is, but it's big. That's right. Which are, you know, in the end run, it's going to affect our total wellness. It, because if we're not well physically, mentally, and spiritually, we aren't well. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a break right now, people. Uh, today, we are going to feature a new segment. It's called Let's Ask Marjorie. This will be a weekly um, presentation to be part of our program that you will have a chance to ask Marjorie Bear Don't Walk a, any question that you may want to ask her, and we will pick one question a week that will be presented on this program. So send any of those questions to Tribal Health and Human Services. The address and the phone numbers will be presented at the end of this program. Thank you, we'll be right back. Today's question we have for Marjorie is, a number of people have mentioned hearing rumors that Tribal Health is going broke. Is that possible? <laughs> Anything's possible, but it's not true. Um, Tribal Health is funded under the Indian Health Service, and the Indian Health Service is funded on a year-to-year -year basis by Congress. And so with each congressional budget, we're included in it. It's not a guarantee that we'll be included, but we have so far. And so um, we're funded, uh, like all of IHS, at 65% of need. And so there's a 35% uh, deficit out there that uh, we're not able to cover. But at 65% of need, we try to run as efficiently as we can, and that's what we're striving for is uh, an efficiently run health program. And so as of, uh, for October and November, tribal health um, was 3% under budget. And we report our um, 
financial condition to the Tribal Council on a monthly basis. All right, so so for, for the time being, we are okay. We are we're, okay, We're yes. running under budget. Under budget, 3%. And so I'd, I'd like to say something as, uh, you know how people get on these TV shows and they want to say hi, Mom, and all that kind of stuff, right. you know? Uh, I want to say happy birthday to my mother. Uh, my mother is Jane Whitworth Mitchell, and on the 14th of January, she'll be 75 years old, and she'll be very happy that I told everyone. <laughs> Brownie points for Mom, fantastic. <laughs> yeah. And everybody would like to thank you for have a, tell everybody to have a happy New Year's. Marjorie, thank you for your answers. Um, for those of you who would like to send in questions that we can answer, um, please send them to Tribal Health. The numbers will be flashed on the screen. Um, we'll be re responding to all questions that you may have either verbally or by letter. Um, in the future, if you're question is uh, selected, we are going to present you with some sort of uh, healthy gift. So again, thank you and um, good day. Thank you. Remember, good medicine is your show. We're back from our, our segment with Let's Ask Marjorie. We're here today with Paul Coates, our nurse, nurse practitioner, and today, again, we're talking about on good medicine is obesity on weight management. So, Paul, let's get started again here. Um, you know, Paul, we were just talking previously about what is obesity, um, how people carry, carry their, their weight on their bodies, um, the problems we see with obesity um, around our, our world right now. How, and obesity in Native Americans, where do we see obesity in Native Americans? How do we see it and how, how, do you, how do you project that as far as the problems in men and women and how are we gonna deal with this? Well, um, a few years ago, uh, Johnny R. Lee gave us a bunch of pictures uh, from old pictures that he had of uh, Native American people from around here and uh, I was looking at I was looking at some of those, and it seems like when I look at the ones that go back 30 to 40 years, I don't see a lot of heavy people that's there, and uh, and it really reflects what has been happening. When I look at some of those old pictures, and then when I go around. Uh, Indian country not only here but to other places, I see that obesity has become a serious problem uh, within the Native American community um, as it has within all the different race groups. Uh, I have a slide here that I think is going to be shown that takes a look at the prevalence of obesity in some different racial groups. And uh, back in 1994, they looked at uh, some different, uh, they looked at males and females. And as the slide shows up there, um, the percentage of obesity amongst females in the Native American group is about 40% uh, of Native American women uh, were classified as obese. That was in 1994. Um, if you, look at those same kinds of studies in regards to men, um, the picture is even a little bit less rosy. In all the different race groups that they looked at in 94, um, Native American men showed the highest prevalence of obesity, and as the slide shows, it's about 34% of the Native American men were heavy. Um, so within Indian country, and within the Native American community, obesity has become a very major problem. And it seems to be uh, even worse in certain, in certain parts of the country. Um, if you look in the southwest amongst the Pima Indians, the rate of obesity and the rate of diabetes is approaching about 90% of all the tribal membership uh, within that particular tribe. Likewise, up in some of the uh, Alaskan villages, obesity is a, is a very large problem up there. Um, there's been a lot of different theories that have gone around about why this has been the problem. I've, I've heard talk about uh, commodities foods and how, uh, how fat that is and how high calorie those foods are. Um, there's been uh, 
there's been different theories that have, have come up. One that has been gaining a lot of credibility in recent years has been what's called the thrifty gene theory. And if you look at uh, native peoples, not only in, in America, but around the world, um, what you find in some of those cultures is that the whole cycle for getting food and having food and consuming food, it really fluctuated quite a bit. There were times of plenty when there was a lot of food, and then there were times when there was not so much food available. And what the researchers, and it's mainly the genetics people, are, are saying is that it appears that amongst some of these racial groups that there has emerged what's called the, this thrifty gene. Mm -hmm. And what this thrifty gene does, Larry, is it makes it possible for people who are in those groups to store away a lot of extra energy, mainly in the form of fat, and to keep it stored so that when the food supply is scarce, then that fat can be accessed and burned off. And it was, it was something that at, in, in times, in those older times, that really helped people to survive and to make it through the, the lean years. Well, when you take away that cycle of feast and famine and you provide a steady food supply over time, and especially a steady food supply that's high in fat and high in sugar and high in calories, well, guess what? That thrifty gene just uh, keeps storing away, storing away, storing away, and what you end up with is obesity. So um, the, um, the problem of obesity within Native America is is serious and, and quite extensive. So the changing of times from the olden days until the present time is taking its, its toll on us right now. We, it is. Everything is fast food, high fat, convenience, <clears throat> as I call it, the microwave age. Everything's quick and fast. The microwave age, yeah. Mm -hmm. Somebody once once mentioned to me that, you know, it used to be that we would spend a lot of our time going out and looking for food, and a lot of energy was spent gathering food, um, hunting, uh, preparing the foods, digging the roots, getting the berries, gathering the plants, gardening, doing all of these sorts of things. A lot of our time and a lot of our energy went to doing that. And uh, now, instead of us going out and looking for food, it's, it's like food is going out and looking for us. I cannot get in front of a radio, a TV, I can't even drive down the road without being uh, presented with, you know, hamburgers and French fries and and pops and all sorts of foods that is, you know, that is trying to tempt me okay. in there. <laughs> well, Paul, for our last question, we've got three minutes or so left in this program today. Um, could you tell me, are there any standard ways of managing obesity in a, in, in a, in a short period of time here? Standard ways of managing obesity. Well. One thing that is exciting about now is that there does seem to be a more standard way of managing obesity. And what we're finding is that a combination of approaches that utilizes a good medical evaluation, that utilizes education in terms of eating habits and nutrition, that utilizes uh, fitness and exercise, psychological counseling, and in some cases, medication, mm -hmm. that a, a, a way of managing weight that includes some or all of those different components is starting to become a more standard practice. I think anybody that's been in a grocery line has seen all sorts of different kinds of approaches to weight management, whether it be the cabbage diet, the grapefruit diet, um, there are many uh, products through multi-level marketing programs that, uh, that are used for weight management, vitamin supplements. There is always something on the diet or weight management frontier. And what I'm excited about is that uh, finally the medical community is beginning to look at obesity not as a behavior problem and not as something that um, 
well, not as not as a behavior problem. They're starting to look at it as a medical problem and starting to treat it seriously with different methods. So we are coming into a new world as far as weight management goes. Um, for those of you who are watching this program today, um, we want to thank you for, for coming aboard and watching this program. It's called Good Medicine. Today, our guest speaker was Paul Coates, our nurse practitioner, who is basically running our weight management program for us. He is basically our head person doing this right now. Um, I would ask you to you know, tune in to look for us in the future. Um, this program right now, we're going to be doing a, a three, more ser three more series on weight management. Um, nutritionally, um, with exercise, and ment is it, was it mental, you know, mental aspect of it? Or? Uh, I think we're hoping to look at the eating, the exercise, and the medication the aspects medication. of it. All yeah. right. Um, well, again, welcome to our program. This is our second one in this series. We'll be back weekly. Good Medicine is your program. We hope you watch this and subsequent programs to stay informed about your health care. And we'd like to hear from you about how we're doing. Please direct any comments or suggestions you have to us. You can reach us at...